Don't let anybody tell you that you are wasting in prayer. There is no waste in prayer. When we don't even wait for him, that is when we miss all the opportunities. There are doors and there are doors. There are doors that sit and open. If you were not praying in your crown's time, you won't understand that door when that Satan door opens to deceive you that it's God's door. And you enter. That's the beginning of your problems. Some people, because they made a certain decision, is that decision that began the issues of their lives. Because Satan will wait at that door. I thank God for the opportunity he gave me. At the time when I was in school, I just wasted my. It looked like I was wasting, actually, because at the same time I was struggling with my academics, being in the wrong department. In the name of parents, felt it's good for you to be here. It's the best, without checking your abilities, without checking your passion, without checking what flows more with you easily so I was in that department with a lot of struggle and Satan he used it to in Nigeria say Agbata, he used my issues to wear wear that garment it made it look so big in my eyes because you're in the wrong place you will struggle but Satan thought okay since she's there she will miss she won't be able to even find the way of God. Let her be dealing with these issues of academic problems first. Kept me busy with it. But I thank God at that time that I found this place where I started praying. Because I had gone around several fellowships. What am I looking for in those several fellowships? They say, this fellowship, if you come, you will pass all your exams. This fellowship, if you <laughs> oh, they will say in this place, ah, there's one by road, is to buy. It's called Success <laughs> Hey, Success by road. Success pen. If you use it, it's a blessed pen. If you use it, pass all your exams. Hey, really? I really like to go there. We move from place to place looking for success. Hey, <laughs> God have mercy. When I was done and tired, because it didn't change. Nothing changed. Until I came back to this place. I found him. Found his voice. And I started working with him. Well, of course, the first time when you enter, you know, you still have the mind of the success you had. Many of us, you have had that thing you didn't, um, that thing you have been looking for, that you have not found. Now that, okay, if we introduce you to this new, new man of God, or this new place, that thing I've been looking for to come to pass. So so you are coming without expectation. Hmm. That was how I came with that same expectation after moving all over the place. When that place, I now started seeing that. It wasn't really about the success. It wasn't really about the success. There was something God was trying to teach me. He was trying to teach me how to survive in the midst of whatever I am going through. Yes. And sometimes some situations might never change. But you will change. Hallelujah. I know nobody likes to hear that my situation will never change. No. Nobody loves to hear that kind of thing. But the truth is, He will increase you and make you bigger than the situation. Coming to that place, my parents started noticing. Is your Christianity it's looking like a fanatical? It's too much. It's too much. If they will even tell me that if this kind of strength that you see for this, if you employ it into reading your books the way you are doing it with pass. But the unknown to them, I had tried all kinds of things. Read with intelligent people. We read. <laughs> you still fail. Read the uh, read in the night by two, three. 
to enter. You go. You didn't enter. There's a place in the school where if you read to enter. You didn't enter. What is going on? <laughs> it's years later I just realized God was just watching me and saying, what will you do if I don't change this situation? And he just allowed he allowed Satan just have a few days. He allowed him. Until one of those days, I came and I, I wrote my exams. So I had now come to this new place where I had God's voice. And it was doing me like, I found a new friend. Like I just got married. And anything I said, he would do. Anything I said, he would do. Anything I asked the Lord, he would say, ah. I'm like, ah. so we can, this same thing, we can employ it, deploy it into this aspect we have been asking the Lord about. I mean, we've been struggling with. And so I said, okay, is it not faith? We walk by faith. And so we had written exams and everything. Then my parents, when their exams were marked, my dad was a Senate member in the university. So they sat over results. He brought the whole department result to the house. I was number one in my class. So he's number one. So he said, Dina, come, I want to show you something. So I ran with the spectacles. This God that I have believed, he has changed my story. Things will change for the better now that I am in God and I know him, I hear his voice. He will prove my parents today that I know him. I boast in the Lord. <laughs> when the time came. So I came in one hand. My heart was shaking one part, but one part of it. You. Then when he showed me the result, I didn't know whether to collapse. <laughs> I'm not sure it's, it's my result. He said, it's your result. Look at your name. Look at, look at. And I think that was the time that the more I struggled, the more worse it became. So I got confused. Like so many people get confused when they come into church. That the things that they told them if they come to God, things will change. So I got confused. I didn't change. God, you didn't change this. I posted about you in the front of my parents. You didn't change it. I had done all the things I could do in the world that they say, if you do like this, it will change. You didn't change it. So I was confused. I was more confused than how I started. And I think that was a state that I wanted to bring me to. At that point, I didn't know whether, I didn't know what to do. So then my dad said, advising, you see, that is why we say this, that is why we love you, we do this. I was like, oh my God. I left his room, I went to my room. It felt like the whole world had collapsed on my head. I was like, but what about my witness with God? Am I boosting you, Lord? You didn't change. So all that while I was thinking about that, walking to my room, so many things were going through my mind. And at the nick of it, so I got to my room, it was so, everywhere was so tense in my heart. But I didn't know where a force came from that evening as I entered into my room. And I, I, I just knelt, <laughs> I, I just don't know what, I was wearing a nightwear. I said this story about the way again. I was wearing a nightwear with buttons. I don't know what strength or what, but I wanted to scream. You know, this kind of scream that nobody will hear you. That was the kind of, it's a deep, it's called a deep shout. A deep scream is within your soul. And I, I tore the, the strength, I don't know, I tore that garment like this. And I fell to my knees with heavy tears and bowed down. When I bowed, what came out of my mouth was, Lord, when I fail or I pass, I will still serve you. I will 
will still serve you whether my situation changes or not you are still God and you will still be my God so Esther said if I perish I perish who is worth trying so also Daniel and at the end of the day did he perish I now saw that that was what Satan was using to control my life the situation and the challenge to keep me away from praying in the chronos time when I was able to break away from his control and I said I fail that's all doesn't change I still love my God what kind of game is this I continued I was now even free I was free it was like a burden had been taken off my shoulders because from that point in time it was all about God's care for me he's able to take care at that point you're thinking about your future because they've told you that all these things you're doing now depends on how your, it's going to show how your future will be so we struggle to make sure everything but we don't even know what God is saying and I was able to break away from that control it's a control and be able to love God truly and pure in my heart without thinking of what he will do and what he has not done and what he has done no praise the Lord it's a pursuit of God How, what's your passion for him he will test you he will test your passion you say you love me okay I'm not changing the situation let me see you truly love me some people walk away. Some people throw in the towel and let go. But some people stick with him. Whether he changes their situation or not. We need to come to that point where we'll say, Lord, me, I'm your hands. Whatever you want to do with this situation, I have shown you the situation. If you are changing it, if you are... I have shown you the situation. I've told you about the situation. But whatever you want to do, do with it. So I threw the ball back to his courts. It's left to you. You want to use a girl who knows nothing, who the world has declared knows nothing? Yeah, because of course that's the system. <laughs> if you don't pass this exam, so so time, so so time, you, you stand no chance of life. In this world, you stand no opportunities, you stand nothing. That's what the world system will tell you. Say, Lord, this is me. Whatever you can do with this vessel of nothing, do with it. And that was how he began to help me. Things did not change that much. No. I wasn't the most intelligent person in my department. Maybe somewhere in the average or towards the back. But that was what Satan wanted me to think. He wanted me to think that way until I freed myself from the body of his control. Then I, can, I could begin to do exploits for God. He will now, he, God, will now begin to use the base things to confound the wise and they're wondering what? you are not even up to but how did you get there ah no he decides who he wants to use who he doesn't want to use he decides your journey but you decide when to take it but once you have taken it allow him to make the turns for you because it's not about you anymore hallelujah when you begin to pray about a community where there's darkness and you're praying that God's light will come into it God let your river flow here your river of life flow here he releases life that's why we can't do without prayer because when you pray say men ought to pray always and not to faint when you pray it's like it's your own ventilation 
for life. He's giving you life. So if you're not praying, honestly, you will be choking of life. You don't have life. When you understand prayer is that pipe that transports life into a situation, into you, you will always want to talk to God. You will always want to be in the spirit. You always want to speak in the spirit. Even if you don't have the vocabularies, you have the language of the spirit that has been given. Why was prayer given to the church? Prayer was not given to the church in the first place as a tool or a means of solving problems and challenges. That was not the reason, the first reason prayer was released. Rather, it was given as a means for intimacy with the Godhead and for maturing believers into the image of the Christ. That was why prayer was given to the church. To mature us. Because as you pray, God begins to speak to you. It's a communication. He begins to speak to you about you. About how, you know, that prayer, you bring Christ, yeah, his image, and bring your own image. And where there's no alignment, he begins to tell you what to chip, chip off. So you begin to look like him, like that image. So that's what prayer does. As you become more intimate with him, he will begin to tell you. The areas of your life that has issues that are not in conformity to his life. John 15 verse 4. John 15 verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in we must abide in him when you abide in him then you can bear fruits and those are your prayers as you abide in, in prayer as you are abiding and you are you are having that intimacy with god and he's drawing you closer you are loving him so much that he will strike you first with one very strong thing you've been holding on to for so long it will shake your heart and after a while you let it go then you become closer you're loving him. You're going. You see, God, God loves us. Sometimes he doesn't bring everything. Bass, 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 bass. Gradually, he allows you. Just come. Just come. Come as you are. Come as you are first. Come, come. And as you come, then he will, out of love, tell you this thing. And because you, have, you love God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then you let go. Gradually. As you walk with him like that personally, you begin to see transformation in your life. Even you will know that something has changed about me. On a good day, this thing will have got me so angry. I don't even know why I'm angry about it. The work has been going on in the heart. As he speaks and you yield, then transformation can happen. When you don't yield, that is when we don't see any change, despite you coming to church every day. When you don't yield, it's a school. You have to yield. If the teacher marks your result and tells you this is wrong, go and do your correction. Go and do it. If you don't do your correction, you can never know it. You won't know it that this is. The last time I did it was like this. It was marked wrong. And then this is the correct, the correct one I carried to the teacher. And the teacher said, oh, this is correct. And I now know that this is the way that I should go. This is the way that I should walk. It's a school. We need to yield much more so that we can bear fruit. If not, we will be Christians without fruit. No, that is not how God intended it. Abide with me. Abide in me and abide in me. We will bear fruit. Hallelujah. Jesus reminds us that we cannot grow or produce ripe fruits unless we are connected to God. And prayer is our way of intimate and personal communication with God. 